Because when I see young men who don't have fathers, I immediately go to them. Young ladies, when I see people who are hurting, I don't reject them. When I see any of y'all who are members of Relentless anywhere, y'all know, I don't tell y'all, walk away, don't speak to me, don't look at, that's stupid. Who do you think you are? as a pastor, that you can look at God's people and act like they are not worthy of a hello, a handshake, a hug, but you call yourself anointed. The anointing doesn't act like that. Do me a favor, get Mark chapter 5 in your hands. If you'll do me a favor and stand for the reading of God's word. Unless you're worshiping, then stay right where you are. Mark chapter 5, starting at the first verse. Once again to all of our visitors here in this sanctuary and around the world. God bless you today. I'm grateful that you're here. You're not watching by accident. We've been in the certified series. <sighs> Last Sunday, I preached certified anointing, part two. Then on Wednesday, Pastor Ab brought us to another place with certified servant. A word from God about our posture and that our heart matters more than what we actually do because you can do a thing and have the wrong attitude and mess up the whole thing hallelujah but the anointing is the power of heaven to change things in the earth one of the things that Jesus came for is to set the captives free somebody say set them free to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, to set the captives free, to set at liberty those who are bound. This is scripture. That's what Jesus said when he picked up the book of the prophet Isaiah. We read last week, we found, he found where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to do some specific things. One of them, after preaching the good news to the poor, is to set at liberty those who are in bondage. That means I don't have to stay stuck in a habit, a pattern, a sin, a curse, a generational stronghold. I'm tired of coming to church and nothing changing. That should be the posture of all of us around the world who call ourselves believers. But there is an insidious, creeping, flesh-ruled move of Christian entertainment that tricks you into thinking you've grown when in fact you've only been entertained. Entertainment Christianity will give you an amazing song, Nothing Will Change. You'll hear wonderful flowing words. Nothing will change. Lights, camera, action. Nothing will change. The only thing that moves devils out of the way is real power from heaven. Jesus said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. When Jesus declared the kingdom, and in this moment, I'm, just a moment, I'll let you sit down. When Jesus declared the kingdom, what he did is he took back territory that had always belonged to God, but we gave authority and dominion to the devil when we disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden. The original sin of disobedience took away our dominion and our right to rule the earth as God intended. But I'm tired of living in a curse that Jesus already freed us from. So I'm going to preach for a few minutes from the subject, certified deliverance. 
certified deliverance. Somebody say deliverance. Say it again like you mean it. Say deliverance. So let me read this scripture. Mark chapter 5. Jesus is just coming from the moment where he rebuked the waves and spoke to the wind. Or is it the other way around? He rebuked the wind and spoke to the waves. That's what he did. Yeah, he said, he said, peace be still. And there was great calm. So he rebuked the wind and he spoke to the waves. He spoke to it and said, peace be still. And so the next thing we see is Mark chapter 5. So check this out. There's a storm that tries unsuccessfully to stop God's people from getting to their destination. I could stop the sermon right there because some people on my left-hand side have not yet heard what I said. The devil pulled out all the stops to keep the disciples and Jesus from getting to the destination. And Jesus didn't row a boat. He didn't grab an oar. He didn't try to restart the engine. He stepped up to the edge of the boat and said, stop it. That's enough. Peace. Be still. And you need to read it the way he said it because he didn't say it sweet. He told it what to do and it obeyed because it had to, not because it wanted to. When you study the Greek in that scripture, it'll blow your mind because the storm wanted to keep going. But the connotation is that the storm had to listen because the one who was speaking had more power than it did. So they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarenes. And when Jesus had come out of the boat, watch this. No sooner had he come out of the boat, look what happens. Immediately, there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs. This is where he lives. He lives among dead things. Be careful where you live. He had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one could bind him, not even with chains, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces. Neither could anyone tame him, and always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshiped him. And he cried out with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. For Jesus said to him, come out of the man, unclean spirit. Then Jesus asked him, wait a minute, hold up. What is your name? And I'm going to stop the reading of the word right here. Jesus asked a devil what his name was, and it wasn't because he wanted to introduce himself to it. He asked him his name for a specific purpose. And when I tell you what it is, you're going to do the same thing. And you're going to watch demons leave your house, leave your life, leave your marriage, leave your body. The title of the message is Certified Deliverance. Father, speak through your word and get the glory. And God, do it like dominoes in 30 minutes or less. In Jesus' name, amen. Somebody ready for this word? There are a couple of things that I'm going to say today that might strike some of you as controversial. I am unconcerned. I am tired of church that plays patty cake with devils. We want to preach everything to you about having a great life and a happy home and five steps to this and three steps to that. When the bottom line is Jesus came to give authority back to God's people because the devil had gotten authority in the garden and had been running havoc and wreaking havoc all over the earth. You need to understand that as it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit. The reason why there are superpowers in the world who control things is because they got the bigger weapons and they can tell other people what to do. When you have the money and the power and the guns and the resources, you can tell other people what to do, so you think, until somebody with more guns and more power and more nukes can come and tell you what to do. Now, that's how it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit. 
we find in the life of Jesus that while he was growing and developing, we didn't hear a lot about demonic activity in his development. Only after he was baptized and came out of the water and then walked through the process of development and preparation, which is the wilderness, when he came out of the wilderness and got baptized, the next thing you know, after he got baptized, went to the wilderness, he comes out, he's ready to preach. The first time he steps into the temple, he reads the book of the prophet Isaiah. They immediately get offended by him. They literally tried to kill him that day. You got to study this. The moment you set authority and let people know who you are, people are going to not like you. You got to be okay with that. You're not here for a popularity contest. Now, let's move quickly. Jesus then goes back into the synagogue. The Bible says in the synagogue, somebody stood up with an unclean spirit and says, what are you doing here, Jesus, son of the most high God? You came to torment me. The Bible says Jesus told the devil to shut up. Shut up, devil. Why? Because devils don't testify of who I am. I'm not going to let you tell these people who I am. They need to get the revelation through, through my power, not through your fear. The enemy was afraid because they knew Jesus had more power. So they're screaming, please don't torment me. He's like, shut your mouth because you're not going to be witnesses to my power. My deliverance and healing in the lives of the people will be my witness and the witness of the father of my authority in the earth. So he would always silence demons because he didn't need demons spreading the word about who he was. I'm going to keep going. But there comes a moment where you start looking at the life of Jesus and you realize that everywhere he went, demons started popping up. Everywhere he went, he was casting out devils. Now, why is this important? Because we don't hear about that in church anymore. Everything in church is nice and sweet and safe. As long as we sing songs that I like and you preach a message that I like, then I'll come back and maybe I'll write you a check and I'll tip you, excuse me, tied to God. No, it's not tied to God. In some areas, people just give because they want that person to keep telling them what they want to hear. I am not that person. God is who I have to answer to. And so if people don't like what I say and they decide to withhold their money, that's on them. But I got to preach this thing like God gave it to me. And it's funny because there are times when people are like, well, why would you talk about controversial things? Why not? Why not? When are we going to ever tell the truth? The church needs to be the place where we have honest dialogue about what's really going on. Have I got on my why not bracelet from my brother Russ? Why not? Why not? Because this is the moment where there is nothing that can stop us but us. Let me make this. Stop giving the devil more power than he has. Well, the devil's trying to stop me. He's been trying to stop you since you were in your mama's womb and it hasn't stop you from getting to where you're going. If anything, the opposition of the devil actually gave you muscles you wouldn't have had. So the opposition actually was something designed to strengthen you. Someone ought to be grateful that the Lord trusts you enough to let you go through it so that you could be strengthened not only for yourself but for other people. We don't talk about deliverance because deliverance is not popular because deliverance is not a house or a car. Deliverance is not a, a bank account full of money. Deliverance is the thing that gives you peace when you leave up out of here. Real deliverance is when you know the thing that you walked in with is not on you and it's never coming back. That is deliverance. And you can always tell somebody that's really been delivered because they talk differently. They shout differently. They worship differently. They don't hold anything back. They're the ones that a lot of us are afraid of because they just start shouting. The first time they hear the first part of the song, they're like, ah, oh God, I think you're like, dang, that was fast. But you don't know how long they were in bondage. 
You don't know how long and how many nights they cried. Now they're free. They have to clap. They have to shout. They have to praise. Who am I talking to? Where are the people that say, I, I love you, I don't want to scare you, but I got to give God a crazy praise because he's just been that good. Is there anybody other than me that it does not take a band? It doesn't, I don't need a worship team. They're great, I love them. But if they weren't there, I'd still shout to God. I'd still wave my hands. I'd still say, God, I thank you for what you've done for me. Somebody give him a praise break right now. And keep praising. If you have children, if they're not praising, you praise for them and put it in their account. There's nothing more powerful than a delivered life. You want a testimony of the greatness of God? Find somebody that's been set free from bondage by the power of Jesus Christ. And I need you to know that the enemy is counting on the church to stay in this building. Please pray for me. I said the enemy is counting on us to shout in here, to praise in here, to run around in here, to speak in tongues in here, and leave this room and take none of that with us. We need to start treating the church building like a grocery store. You go in there to get what you need, but you take it home, and that's when you cook it. I need some help in here. I need somebody to... I need some people to stir that thing up. Everybody get up, act like you stirring. I need some claps and some stirs. I don't need you to get comfortable in here. I need you to stir that thing up. Stir it up. Start cooking. Why wait? Watch this. And there, there, are, there are people in this room right now that are about seven minutes away from complete deliverance for you and your family. I'm not sure who, but you should say, why not me? You need to say, why not me? Don't look over there and say, why them? Say, God, why not me? It might be me this time. It might be you coming to see me in a few minutes. I might be blind Bartimaeus on the road. You might stop and see me. Maybe if I lift my hands, maybe if I shout, maybe if I celebrate somebody else's deliverance, maybe it'll be my turn. Why not? Instead of saying, how come somebody else get, why not me? It's my turn. I get to enjoy freedom because of what Jesus did. I get to enjoy deliverance because of what Jesus did. I want to ask a question while some of you are standing, others are seated. Is there, has there ever been anybody in here who was a part of a gang? A gang. A couple people. Pastor, you were a part of a gang. Other people who have been parts of a gang. No, there's, first of all, there's no judgment in here. Thank you for being transparent enough. I'm getting ready to lose it. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. If you think everybody in this room has always been saved, you got the wrong church. We got some ex-gang bangers. We have some ex-drug dealers. We, we got some ex-everything in here. I don't even want to start going down the list. And the people online, you might not see them, but the ones that are clapping are the ones that God delivered from the thing that they couldn't deliver themselves from. So you're going to have to excuse us as we all give God a praise break right here. Somebody bless him right there. I heard somebody, I heard a shout back there. That's a shout of deliverance. When you can hear it through a mask, when you can still hear it. I love that kind of praise because I, I can have a mask on, but heaven's going to hear what I have to say. Who am I talking to? 
You can keep my mouth and my nose covered, but you can't keep my praise covered because my praise is not contingent upon a mask. I will shout through a mask. Hallelujah! Gangs thrive on territory. This is our corner. Another, another gang got that corner. And as long as we don't go over into that corner, we gonna be cool. But the moment you try to step into my section, it's gonna be a problem. If that's how gangs on the earth do it, imagine how the devil thought he had it. He, they, they was balling for thousands of years. Yeah, we got dominion. This fool, Adam, gave us all the dominion. We got the dominion. Look at him. They, they got to institute the law. Look at Moses out here getting tablets. They not going to listen. Oh, look at all the prophets. Now all the prophets prophesying about somebody coming, whoever that is, whatever. Then Malachi. Mm -hmm, look at him. He talking about tithe, silence. The next time we hear from God is 400 years later. The distance between Malachi and Matthew was 400 years. The enemy thought he was balling for that whole time. And then one day, I need somebody to help me preach in here. Then one day, the landlord showed up. I need 17 people in the back to hear what I said. You can act like you own it, but devil, you just a tenant. When the landlord shows up, you got to evict. You have to pack your stuff and go. I need somebody in here to know that the landlord has shown up and said, I'm taking my I'm taking my stuff back. I'm taking my cities back. I'm taking my corners back. I'm taking my people back. I'm taking, I'm taking it back. One day, an angel named Gabriel shows up and speaks to Zechariah that your wife who's been barren is going to have a baby. You're going to name him John. He's going to go before the Lord and prepare the way. And Zechariah didn't say the right thing. So the angel said, since you didn't believe it, we're going to go ahead and shut your mouth until he gets here because you have so much authority in your mouth that you could actually short circuit what God wants to do if you say the wrong thing. I don't know who this is for, but you need to start saying some really, really crazy things out of your mouth right now while you're clapping. I'm going to give you about 15 seconds. You need to just blurt it out. Billionaire. Trillionaire, debt free. I buy all my family houses paid off in cash. I live off 10% and tithe 90. Somebody needs to say something crazy. My family members are healed from cancer. My family's delivered from mental illness. I need you to say something crazy. Gabriel then goes to Mary. And says, you are going to birth the son of the most high God. She says, be it unto me, according to your word. And then for 30 years, he goes through the process of development. And then he gets baptized. And then he announces who he is. Now he's in the middle of his ministry. And everywhere he goes, devils show up. Sorry. They didn't show up. They were always there. They just had nobody who had enough power to challenge their position. Do you know devils go to church too? And the reason why they feel comfortable enough to stay is because nobody's saying anything with any authority to make them leave. Oh, I feel God in the room. Just because people are in there doesn't mean they're for you or for God. They were in the temple. There was a man in the temple. And when Jesus got there, he stood up and blurted out, I know who you are. You're the son of the most high God. And Jesus says, shut up, unclean devil, and come out of there. I need you to know, Elder Johnny, that the moment he spoke it, the demon had to leave. 
There was no conversation. There was no argument. There was no fight. Jesus spoke and the devil left because when you got power, you don't have to say it twice. I need some help. I need somebody to help me preach it. I won't be long. Why were devils in the church? Because the devil thought that territory belonged to him too. That's why devils are in church buildings now. Notice, I, they're not in the church of the Lord Jesus. But, but let me make it very clear that there are religious institutions that are set up that have the conversation about God, but no presence of God. The devil can talk scripture with you. He just has no authority for it to come to pass in his life. Somebody say deliverance. What is the purpose of coming here every week if, if I'm going to still be in bondage? Why am I tithing if nothing changes? Why do I shout? Why do I lay down on the ground and they put a cover over my back if nothing has changed? I want real freedom. I said I want real freedom, not church freedom, but a show enough freedom that when I bust through the exit doors, I know that whatever devil was on my shoulder is left at the altar, never to return to my house. Is there anybody that knows that we serve that kind of God? Oh, this is an interactive service, so somebody needs to push a sound out into the atmosphere. Worship team, I'm going to need y'all to help me. I... There was a man who lived in a region called the Gadarenes. The word Gadarenes means reward at the end. Jesus... Literally, devils tried to stop Jesus from getting to this region. A huge windstorm arose. That's demonic opposition to your arrival. There will always be demonic opposition to you arriving in the place of destiny. You've been praying the wrong prayer. Lord... Tell the devil to leave me alone. Stop it. I'm so mad at you, devil. Oh, why you keep messing with me? Mess with somebody else. And he says, I, I don't have to mess with them because I already got them. But I got to keep messing with you because no, no matter what I try, I can't seem to get you on my side. I almost had you with depression and then you, you started worshiping. I almost got you with that relationship, but then the Holy Spirit spoke to you and you got out just in time. I almost got you with the car accident, but then the angel pushed your car out of the way. Every time I tried to get you, I can't get you. I even had you born in the wrong neighborhood, but God kept the bullets from going through your window. I even tried to short circuit your career. I tried to give you a boss that hates you, but God still helped you to jump the line and the one that wanted to fire you had to promote you. Who am I talking to? Is there anybody that the devil has tried it over and over and over and over and over again and yet and still here you are and if you are like me you need to stand on the pew like my brother in Christ and somebody ought to say thank you! I said somebody ought to stand on a pew and say, thank you, Jesus. If he ever freed you from anything, you ought to thank him. Oh, if he ever saved you, if he ever blessed you when you didn't deserve it, you ought to say thank you. If you are still alive when you know good and darn well you should be in your grave, you ought to say thank you. If God allowed you to live and one of your friends passed, you ought to say thank you. I need another sound to raise up out of here.
There it is. Uh-oh. I heard the Holy Ghost say push, 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 push. Because the root word of deliverance is delivery. And I need you to know that you're leaving a confined space and he's pushing you out into a greater space for you to occupy. I need somebody to push and come away from the old you and step into the greater you. I need you to push. Don't stop, keep worshiping. Your business is about to flourish in a way that you're not prepared for. And don't apologize for the millions that he's bringing. It's your turn now. It's your time now. God's got his hand on your life. And I'm proud of you. And I celebrate you. And go be great. And don't look back. It's your turn now. I need somebody to push in here. Elder Nicole, keep praying. The Holy Ghost is Pastor Robert. I need you to I need you to push me through in the spirit. I just need a couple people to fight with me because I, right now I'm acting as a midwife to push greatness out of Relentless Church and those who are online. You're about to step into the greatest moment of your life. And here will be the sound of your freedom. When a baby is born, they make sure it's healthy by slapping it and allowing it to cry because that gets the lungs. It activates the lungs. Now we're dealing with a disease that attacks the lungs, that's hit the world. It wants to take your breath, it wants to take your sound, but COVID cannot take our praise. There he goes. It cannot take our worship. Now she's pregnant and running. Somebody ought to run with her. Don't let that pregnant woman run by herself. I need a couple people to take off around this church. This disease has tried to rob you of your sound, rob you of your praise, rob you, there they go, rob you of your worship. Oh my God, there go the young adults. What are we going to do? I feel the Holy Ghost. Somebody else is, oh, they're taking off all over the place. We need to stir that thing up. Stir it up. Why not? You might as well get free. Why not? You might as well walk in deliverance. Why not? And for anybody that the enemy has illegally held up, here comes your seven time multiplied blessing. I need somebody to shout for me because I got to save my voice for the next eight minutes to finish this word. Somebody say, this is my territory. The devil, there it is. See, the devil was confused because Jesus had not been revealed but his presence shook principalities. They were like, wait a minute. You don't look like it, but I know that power. You're the son of the most high God. We ain't seen nobody with authority like this. Jesus was casting out demons. He was casting out demons. And, and if you study New Testament scripture, there's 20 different instances of Jesus casting out demons. Demonic activity is a reality of a spiritual truth. Don't tell me you believe in God, but you don't believe in the existence of the demonic. That is a false narrative propagated by churches that don't want you to know the truth because they want us to keep talking amongst ourselves like we're just normal and we're cool. No, no, no. You're dealing with devils. There are, there are demons that want to kill you. Jesus said, the enemy comes, steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you would have and life more abundantly. That means I want you to be free. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. That means my deliverance is a part of the package of salvation. Oh my God, I need you to catch this. 
When you go look for a car, you don't just look for the outside. You want to look for the equipment on the inside. Okay, does it have cloth seats or leather? Are the seats air conditioned? Is it power steering? Is it automatic? Do I have heads up display? Do I have a DVD player? Do I have Sirius XM? What's in my package? Well, you need to know once you get saved, a part of the package is deliverance, freedom from demons, power over serpents and scorpions, drink deadly poison. It will by no means hurt you. You can oh, prophesy to the wind and it will obey. Not only does the cross give you salvation in heaven, it gives you power in the earth. So Jesus was getting his rest. He was getting his rest because he knew he was getting ready to go up against 2,000 demons. He was trying to sleep on the boat, Pastor Robert. They wouldn't let him sleep. Oh, my God, we're going to die. He's like, you're not going to die. They're like, yes, we are, the wind and the wave. He's like, didn't I tell you you was getting on the other side? It's like, we don't know. We're not sure. He was like, why don't you chill? Watch what I do. I rebuke the wind and I speak to the waves. Peace be still. That was the devil's best chance at stopping the spread of the kingdom message. The enemy only wants to mute your voice because he knows if you ever have the boldness to open it, you will take territory for heaven. I need somebody to point straight down and say, this is mine. This belongs to me. This belongs to me. Now I need you to take a step and say, this belongs to me too. Y'all missed that. What did the scripture say? Wherever your foot... Wherever the soles of your feet walk, it shall be given to you. It's called home court advantage. When Jesus stepped into the earth, he declared that everything that I step on goes back to my father. That's why devils were so angry because it was like we had this for thousands of years. He shows up and in less than three years, he done took the whole thing back. He took it all, Caleb. I'm, listen, y'all better leave me alone. Jesus comes off the boat before he could get his feet good in the sand. Here comes a man out of the tombs. Now, normally, he scares everybody. You don't see Jesus running from nothing. This, this is a reverse horror movie. In the horror movies now, it's the good people that run, oh, my God, he's going to kill me. Then you fall. Boom. It's normally not somebody that looks like me. I'm not saying nothing. I'm just saying. It's normally like Susie or Jenna, and they're like, oh, my gosh, I fell. My ankle is so hurt, and he's got a knife, and I'm moving so slow. <laughs> but to devils, Jesus is the monster. And because he lives in you, when the devil sees you coming, I need somebody to, they start backing up. They're terrified of your presence, but that's not enough to get them to move. You got to open your mouth because the authority is not in your physical presence. It's in your spiritual declaration. This man rolls up on Jesus and says, I know you. You, Jesus. Son of the most high God. Jesus said, shut up. Come out of there, you unclean demon. And he said, wait a minute. What's your name? When the last time you asked that devil what his name was? See, you fighting, but you don't know his name. That's why you praying all kinds of prayers. It's nice prayers, but you need to be targeted with certain devils. I 
I bind this spirit of lust. That's not a lust spirit. It's depression that masquerades as lust. But if you get the depression demon, you won't desire to have company with someone that doesn't belong to you. You're praying against the wrong thing. It's a good prayer, but that's the wrong spirit. That's why Jesus said, come out. Wait, what's your name? Because your name will tell me what your assignment is. When Jesus cast out demons, he didn't just say, come out. He said, come out, deaf and dumb spirit. Come out, mute demon. Come out, infirm spirit. Oh, my God. So the, the devil said, my name is Legion, for we are many. I need you to understand, the demon didn't want to tell Jesus its name. It had to because Jesus had more authority. Let me help y'all to understand. Stop watching all these stupid, scary movies that make you think the devil got power. You want to know who got power? Go read the book of Job. There was a day when the sons of God came before the presence of God as a census, and Satan also came with them. And God said, Satan, where you been? Um, I, was, I was walking back and forth in the earth, going to and fro. I was, I was walking. I need you to understand the devil answers to God. Did anybody in the balcony hear what I said? Did the people online hear what I said? I said the devil answers to, to God. Jesus said, what's your name? My name is Legion, for we are many. We have unified to keep this one man in bondage because as long as we got him, we got the region. You know why you can't sleep? Because you're dealing with demonic principalities that are trying to keep you in a place that you have been freed from by the blood of Jesus. And it ain't just one spirit trying to hold you down. It's multiple demonic places of, of what's the word? Not demonic uh, 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 possession, but, but influence. See, because you need to know this. Believers cannot be possessed by a devil. I got to help him, Pastor Robert. If you are saved, you cannot be possessed by the devil. The Holy Spirit and demons cannot be in the same place at the same time. I'm so tired of bad theology. Y'all around here saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, scared that you're going to be possessed of a devil. That's bad doctrine. But the devil can press you from the outside. And if he can't get you on the inside, he'll use people. So that's why you got to be careful who you allow close to you in this season. Make sure they're pushing you towards the things of God, not away from the presence of God. My name is Legion. There's 2,000 of us in here. Imagine the isolation and the loneliness of having 2,000 demons, but you're still a man, but you have 2,000. <clears throat> and every time they saw him, lost case, hopeless, put him in bondage. And as soon as they would put him in bondage, the Bible says he'd break the chains. Now, I just caught a revelation, Pastor DeMarcus. I don't know if this is right. I don't think it was the demons that were breaking those chains. I believe it was the man who was still fighting, saying, there's got to be more. I need some help in here. I need a couple of the men of God to come close. I believe that's why Jesus showed up because he saw somebody was fighting. I didn't just let the devils win. I know they in here, but I didn't ask for this. It's got to be somebody. The Bible says when he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and worshiped. We know demons don't worship. That was the man that still had something on the inside saying, I'm in bondage, but God's going to come see about me. I may not be perfect, but God still loves me. 
and I'm not going to stop fighting until he comes to see about me. If I got to tear these chains up, I'm not going to stay in bondage my whole life. If you've ever had to fight devils, you know how hard it is. And you need somebody to fight for you. Because the devil wants territory. Oh, that's why church is the home field advantage. This is home court. Devil might be able to hit us a little bit out there, but you ain't getting none of us in here. This is home court, baby. Say it again. We undefeated in here. We've never lost. We might have been hit, but we get up. You know what's crazy? Home court is a real thing. The Lakers and the Clippers both play in the Staples Center. But depending on what the floor says, it's either a home game for the Lakers or the Clippers. They could both be in the same building, but it not be a home game, depending on the foundation. I need you to know that God wants you to take the foundation out of here and just start putting your home field advantage everywhere else you go. You need to take this to the house and be like, this house belongs to God. This marriage belongs to God. My kids belong to God. My career belongs. Everything I have belongs to I need somebody to get this in your spirit that everything you have belongs to God. I need you to get it in your soul that what I am belongs to God. Uh, the Bible says Jesus said, come out of there, but what's your name? Jesus. My name is Legion. They said, please, we know you got the power to cast us out. Just don't cast us out of the region. That lets you know their assignment was territory. The man was in the way of them keeping the territory. He was so powerful that him being in bondage kept a whole region in bondage. Uh oh. So God has to send his son to take back territory that the enemy thought belonged to him. Do you understand there are people that don't like us because we have more than one campus? And I don't mind that you don't like us, ma'am, sir, because the truth is you can't stop us. You've been trying for three years and we just keep expanding. We go from Haywood Road to Macklin Road to International. You don't hear me. And this is a small thing for God. So then the demons say, send us into the pigs so that we can drown. Jesus gave them permission to go straight into the water. That's funny. Y'all getting baptized, but you're not coming up. You're going to stay down there under the water. You're going to stay dead. Ain't no resurrection for you. Watch this. Then the Bible says the man that had 2,000 demons was sitting, clothed, and in his right mind. When you've been shown enough delivered, you dress different. You talk different. You walk different. You shout different. You praise differently. Am I talking to anybody? Sitting clothed in his right mind. Watch this. And the people of the region were afraid. Now, how are you afraid now that I'm completely delivered? Shouldn't you have been afraid when I had 2,000 demons? Unless, of course, you liked me better when I was in bondage. There are some people that really, really are hoping you never get free. Because if you ever 
get free, you gonna turn this whole world upside down. So you might as well go ahead and get free right now because this message has come to a close. But I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost that if you got the guts to clap in the balcony and shout at your house, God has the power to back you right now and remove devils from your past, your present, and your future. I need somebody to stand on your feet and know that you have shown up been certified, delivered, set free in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, Elder, that the man that got delivered said, Jesus, I want to come with you. But these people, they won't understand what you've done in my life. He said, no, I didn't deliver you so you could play it safe in church. I need you to go home and tell everybody what the Lord has done for you. Is there anybody that if God sets you free, you're going to tell everybody he did it? Wait a minute, hold on. I'm about to say something that's really deep. For those watching online and those here, God is getting ready to give the victory to those who will give him the credit. Some of y'all caught, let me say it again. God is getting ready to give the victory to those who will give him the credit. That means if God knows he can trust you, if they hand you a mic and say, to what do you attribute your meteoric rise of success? Everything I have is because of God. Don't be sitting, well, you know, I worked hard and I worked out and I studied long. Uh-uh. I did that, but God is the reason that I'm where I am. Is there anybody that'll give God? The Jesus said, go home and tell your friends and family what great things the Lord has done for you. When you get delivered, you got to tell somebody. So today, as I close, there are people in this room that need to give their lives to Jesus. Get it right with God. Maybe you need to be a member of Relentless Church. You want to be a part of what God is doing here? Then this is what I need you to do. Don't leave. We're leaving together in just a couple minutes from now. But you and your family need to be a part of a church that believes in the full deliverance power of the blood of Jesus Christ. If you know I'm talking to you, come meet me on this altar right now. Come join what God is doing right here. There are people that are making that move. Come on and join me. Somebody making that move? Here they come. Here they come. I need somebody to give God praise. Here they come. Look at this. Here they come. Look at this. Come on, look at this. Welcome home, man. I need somebody to give God praise. We got so many people joining today. Welcome home. Good to see you. God bless you. I believe there's somebody else. I said, I believe there's somebody else. Somebody else is about to move. You know who you are and you feel that thing in your heart 
And you were like, if he says it one more time, I'm coming. If that's you, come on. There she is. Welcome home, dear. Come on, right there. Amen. You know, you know, you know God was talking to you. Don't, don't, don't leave and not get it right with the Lord, man. Where you at, bruh? You know God was talking to you. You know you need to come to this altar, man. Where you at? If you're like, hey, Pastor John, that's me. Who is it? Wave your hand. I'll come get you. If you wave, I'll come get you. If it's not me, one of the elders will come get you. Where you at, man? If you need somebody to walk with you, I'll walk. Where you at? Where's he at? There's a young man that needs to move towards his altar. I won't have peace until he makes that eternal decision. Your soul is at stake, man. Where you at? Does anybody know that God is real? This is the love of God towards you. That no matter what you go through, God has a plan for your life. And it's not over. Did you hear what I said? It's not over. Your best days are in front of you. For those of us who have been abused and thrown away, or marginalized for those of us who've gone through sexual abuse, those of us who've gone through identity crisis, those of us who have gone through addiction, you need to know that today you are completely delivered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Now I need everybody at this altar and everybody in the audience and everybody online to pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, it's me. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for the blood that was shed for me. I receive the free gift of salvation, not through my work, but the finished work of the cross. The blood is enough to pay for all my sins. Holy Spirit, come live inside. Teach me how to be more like Jesus each and every day. You are my Savior and my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, you're a part of the family. You're saved, and you're now a part of Relentless Church. Come on, come on. This is what I need you to do. We're walking this way. Let's all walk this way together. Come on, we walking, and you're celebrating as they're walking. Y'all keep clapping. They at the altar because God's been good to them. We are gonna walk with them and we'll help them get there. But if she needs to worship right there, let her worship. But we gonna get her back to the room. Listen, hold on. I can't shake this. I feel like something has shifted in our church. Today at four o'clock, our, our teenagers are going to be gathered. You need to have your kids here in that Bishop's Chapel. All teenagers, I want to see you today at four o'clock because God is doing a move. That being said, I feel the power of God. We saw deliverance today. We saw salvation today. And 
We are having our youth choir October 23rd and October 30th at 11 a.m. The, in our choir room and we need your children to be a part of it. Five years old, five to 18. Email worship at ourrelentlesschurch.com. You want your children to be a part of the children's choir, or the youth choir, you know you singing the solo. You know you singing the solo. Huh? You, let's go, we changing culture, let's go. Everybody standing. October 23rd and 30th for our youth choir. October 16th, Hearts and Valor. Real Talk Kim, two to five. Men, we're joining as well. Let me let y'all go. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord our God be gracious to you, show you his favor and give you his peace. If you'll do me one favor, one favor for your pastor. I need you to lift up the greatest shout you can for a Sunday that changed everything.